tried to not do it. Hey guys, Harry here from Speedy Feet. We have the InMotion V12 high torque wheel with you today. And as you can see, there's a few bumps and scratches on it. And that's because last week we took this wheel out into the woods and we had to go, we did a range test and I was riding it and let's say there were a few falls, um, <laughs> which led to a few marks. Um, we actually, at one point, nearly got chased by a wild boar, which would have been quite fun. Unfortunately, we didn't actually get that on camera. Um, now, we're gonna see all of that footage in a second, but before we do, let's talk about this wheel. So the, one of the first things to say is that this wheel looks different from the V12 high speed. And you can see this because the button is orange and the rim here is orange as well. And also the tire treads are thicker for some more off-road riding and those are the main differences between the two wheels on the outside. Um, features that are the same between them, you've got the same touchscreen display here which will tell you your speed, how much battery life you've got left and you can also fiddle with some of the functions um, of the wheel on it as well. You've got the same travel handle which you can open up with the trigger at the bottom of the handle. You've got the same port at the back and the USB and the USB-C ports as well if you want to do things like charge your phone on it. You also have the same kickstand at the back of the wheel although we're not actually using it because we really like this pro unicycle stand that you can get from the Speedy Feet store and actually Having used this wheel, the kickstand is a little bit temperamental and perhaps we'll tell you a little bit about that later on. You've got the same foot plates here uh, with this same kind of sandpaper uh, skateboard kind of texture on them to keep your grip and you've got the same lights on the front and on the back as well. And let me just quickly turn it on so we can see the fact that you've got the LED strips on the side and on the front and the speakers as well that you can hear when you turn it on and off. So this wheel comes in at a weight of 29 kilograms and will take a payload of 120 kilograms. The battery is 1,750 watt hours and the charging time is approximately eight hours if you use the charger that's included in the box. This battery means that you should get a mileage of 96 miles, although we came in much, much less than that. The motor power is 2,800 watts, which means the max speed is 37 miles an hour, and it can take a climbing angle of 45 degrees. The headlight is a 12 watt auto headlight that switches on when you turn it on, or you can adjust that setting in the app. The outer tire dimension is 16 inches and it has a three inch width. Great, so with all those stats out of the way, we'll now show you the footage from the woods that we made last week. Hey guys, we're outside with the V12 High Torque. I've actually not ridden this wheel before, but Ian's been range testing it. And I'm gonna have a go and see what kind of range I can do as someone who rides slightly different uh, than Ian. So um, we're gonna get going and we're gonna see how far we can go. Lovely stuff. We're back. Just finished the range test. Oh, I'm actually a little bit out of breath. We're going to head back to the studio and we're going to tell you how far we managed to get with this wheel and this battery. Awesome. So I really enjoyed using this wheel out in the woods, but I did find that there are a few little gripes that I had. Um, the first thing is that the power on button just is 
in an inconvenient place because it means that I kept turning it on accidentally. So say I was sitting down for lunch or I wanted to grab the travel handle or something, I'd find my thumb just resting on the button and just accidentally turning it on. Um, now I suppose it's quite helpful having the button just right there because it means you can turn it on quite easily and quite quickly, but it almost felt too easy. Um, and it was probably a good like four or five times I ended up turning it on accidentally, which is just a bit annoying. Um, the other thing which I'm actually gonna demonstrate for you is that the, the kickstand here uh, it's helpful, it means you can rest the wheel on wherever you're going, but if you haven't pushed it in all the way, which is actually quite easy to do, when you turn the wheel off and it falls back, it can do that. See that? So the whole wheel actually ends up falling over, even though the kickstand looks like it's in the right position, unless you push it all the way to the wheel, as far as it can go, it will often flip back like I've just showed you. So there we go, that's fine. Um, but that was, uh, that was a problem I had a couple times actually whilst I was using it on and off uh, throughout the day. The other thing to say is that I'm a little bit disappointed with the LED display. Um, now obviously it's great having the touchscreen display, it's great being able to look at it and see how fast you're going and things like that, but when you're out in really sunny conditions like we were whilst we were testing this, actually the screen's just not bright enough to see. Um, so I kept looking down to see how fast I was going or what kind of battery I had left and actually had to stop and actually properly look down for a couple seconds to register what it's telling us just because it wasn't, it wasn't bright enough. Which I actually think is a little bit of a safety concern because obviously all the time that you're looking down at the display, um, you should be trying to look you know, ahead and see where you're going. Um, so just because it's not bright enough means that the kind of functionality of the display is kind of ruined. Um, and it's kind of airs on the side of being slightly um, disruptive to your kind of safe riding. But those three things aside, I like I said, I really enjoy using this wheel. There are a lot of positives. Um, one of the things that I really, really liked about the wheel is actually just that the build quality feels really good. Um, not quite like the Commander or, um, or the Abrams where the build quality feels a little bit cheap at times. This feels very robust. The materials are nice. It feels like it's very strong. Uh, it is plastic, but the plastic feels like it's kind of screwed on there really well and you've not got any bits sticking out that um, something like the Abrams has. Um, so I really like the, the build quality, I thought it was really good. The other thing actually, as a high torque wheel, it definitely does, as it says on the tin, like it was high torque, so we were going up some pretty steep inclines. Um, Mario was on the Commander, and whereas the Commander was saying, slow down, this is too much, actually ended up beeping really loudly and saying like, too hot, too hot, this was fine. This actually took all of those hills at slightly higher pace as well, absolutely fine, which is, uh, I was really surprised actually, I really liked that. One final thing for me was that I really liked how high the foot plates were. Now you can actually adjust how high they are, but for me at this height was just perfect. Now this wheel obviously isn't a suspension wheel, but for some reason somehow it felt like being higher off the ground just added a level of kind of clearance and kind of comfortableness um, whilst riding on uneven terrain that maybe I wouldn't have had if it was a little bit lower down. Um, so yeah, so those are some of the kind of pros to some of the things that I really liked about the wheel. And now it's probably worth saying what kind of range we got. So you might remember that the advertised mileage was 96 miles and we came in at 51 miles on this range test. So that is considerably lower. In fact, it's about half the, uh, the advertised range distance. Um, and I, but I didn't really mind, to be honest, like 51 miles is still a long way um, I wouldn't, personally, I wouldn't be doing 51 miles in a journey anyway. Um, and, you know, for my kind of pace and for my kind of speed, like it, it wasn't a big deal. Now, Ian, however, got much lower than that. And I think that he was a little bit frustrated with the, uh, with the kind of range that he got. Although we'll obviously leave him to talk about that. But for me, 51 miles was absolutely fine. Um, and I didn't have a problem with it. So there we go. Ian's now going to show you how he found riding it. And we're going to pass over to him. Welcome to my thoughts on the V12 High Torque. I took it out the other day, probably a week or so ago now. Took it out and did a range test on it. Let's get that out of the way first and foremost. 27 miles just over. 
So I was able to rag this thing down to that much. Now, as we always say, you will almost certainly get a lot more than that. It's only if you push these things as hard as you possibly can. So it was a mixture of road and off-road. Performs very similar to the high-speed V12, if you want to call it that. It used to be just called the V12 when it first came out and almost immediately brought a high torque. So the difference being, of course, it's got a lot more torque, this thing. So if you're at very, very steep hills. But the one thing to mention about this, you cannot utilise that without side pads. Not really. It doesn't come with side pads in the box. Now, a lot of wheels nowadays are coming, if they're designed to have them, are coming with them. Sometimes it's just a nod, little rubbishy side pads that don't actually do a lot. Um, but like the EX20S I've been riding, lovely big chunky side pads, you can sort of get that torque out of it. You can grab hold of it and actually make the thing do what you want it to do. This one is a bit like a bar of soap. The last wheel I rode like that was the S2, which is quite a few years ago now, the 9 one S2. Obviously nowhere near as powerful, but in terms of slippiness, the design wasn't really ideal for grabbing it and driving it forward. And it only had a tiny little motor. I mean, the motor in that was 450 watts or something. Crazy, isn't it? A similar thing here with this is the fact that actually trying to grab hold of that torque and make it do what you want without side pads, pretty much I would have said you need to get side pads on the high torque version if you're going to get it, if you want to utilize any of that torque. And I also found a bit of a knock on for not having side pads is I actually came off it twice, twice in one range test. The amount of times I come off a wheel is few and far between. So if I'm just riding the range test, for example, which would be normal riding, basically I don't, I'm not sure if I've ever come off on a range test before. I came off twice in one range test and that was kind of on reflection. It's got so much torque that it's quite solid foot plates. And so when you go to lean into them, it was actually almost just getting kicked off the thing. Um, so once I hit a speed, a speed bump in the road, it wasn't painted, nothing at all. I could hardly see it. And I was looking ahead. Well, I didn't see it looking ahead. And I was only going about 15 to 18 miles an hour, something like that. And I just got chucked off it. So I was riding along and the footplates did not cushion it at all. So much torque there available. They didn't even move. I just went, wee, and my feet came off. And I was like floating along thinking, great. And I sprinted out of it, didn't fall, thankfully. Um, and then the wheel sort of rolled along, hit a hedge and tumbled and I damaged there and there. And then I cried and then I got back on it and then rode it again. I came off a little while later, going up a very steep climb to which uh, I, my amount of lean was too much and I just fell off the front of it, basically. This was not given out at all. It was ready to go with flat foot plates, essentially. They weren't dipping or anything, just go and give me more. I didn't really have more to give because there's nothing to grip hold of to match the amount of torque and the terrain I was going up. So long way of saying, if you're buying the high torque, you definitely need to get some side pads if you want to utilize what it offers. Otherwise, you just need to go for the high speed, which I had zero issues with in terms of falling off. Um, yeah, it took that 820 kilometers with no issues whatsoever and never fell off, nothing like that and it was more than I needed. I didn't find it lacking torque. So I was quite surprised when they brought this out, thinking, you want to bring out another one with more torque? Okay, each their own. So you've got two models to choose from, but again, you're going to spend 100 quid or whatever it is in your currency to beef it up to be able to handle that amount of torque. In terms of everything else, pretty much feels the same. The tyre is different, so it's a lot more chunky. I wouldn't say it is quite as agile. It's more of an aggressive tyre for off-road. So I found the road a bit at slower speeds, a bit more effort, but you're talking so minimal. I don't know what it'd be in percentage terms. 20% more effort kind of thing to actually get the thing to roll over and do what you want it to do um, compared to the previous V12 I tested. Otherwise, it's basically the same. What I'd actually like to see would have been um, spiked foot plates and side pads coming in the box to utilize all this off-roadness and this extra torque that you're gonna get. Everything else is pretty much the same. If you haven't seen it already, click down below or up here, wherever it's gonna be for the V12 full-on reviews we've done on those, uh, where you're gonna get essentially all the same details. Um, so the ride, pretty much the same, just bags more torque essentially. So 
that's kind of all I've got to say on it is side pads and foot plates, spiked ones, ideally. Don't forget I rode this in summer as well. It's gonna be, if you start introducing side pads, the uh, torque on your, so the leverage torque, with your foot here, side pads being braced here, and you're pushing against that a lot. So if you're doing loads of steep climbs, which is things kind of designed to do, you could have your feet slipping out, basically, as in slipping forward, because you've got so much weight and pressure on it between there, which is unusual, and the sole of your foot, you can actually get them to slip out, whereas spikes alleviate that completely by pinning you in. So that would be my recommendations, high torque, side pads, and spiked foot plates. Uh, we don't do any for this, but get them nonetheless. Screen, lights, if all been covered, mud guard, and everything else has been covered in the previous V12 video, so there's no point in going back over it. I like the orange accents, so the orange motor and the orange button. I like that, looks pretty cool, bit KTM-ish, if you like that sort of thing. Everything else, exactly the same as the other V12. Um, that's my points really, I'm covering off. So, any questions, comment below, or anything you think you want adding or know more about, and just put it below in the comments. Don't, give us, don't forget to give us a like and subscribe, and share this video. So I will see you on the 250 kilometer review.